Okay, yeah. So, good morning. Yeah. And welcome to Singapore. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm also the general co-chair. Yeah. So, so I'll give a 10 minutes quick introduction before I uh, I go, go to attend to other matters. Yeah. So, so I think today's tutorial is on the on the to me it's a very exciting topic on LLM powered agents on the web. And uh this is a list of speakers. Yeah. Uh uh, unfortunately, Professor Wen is unable to make it. Yeah, so because of his other other matters, but all the other speakers will be here. Hey. Sorry, I think this is from the web, so it's a bit. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you if you want to get more information about tutorials, you can actually get it on the website here. So, so this is an outline. I think I'll give a quick introduction. And then the my colleagues actually will go through various aspects of the LM power agents with two learning, uh, use of it for social network analysis, recommendation, as well as conversational agent. And then of course we we close it with uh, open challenges and beyond. So I guess as we know, I think the LM actually has in a way disrupted a lot of things. I think uh, we all believe that LM has sufficient domain diversity, uh, versatility, and, 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 and also it has sufficient kind of uh, uh, influence capability and emerging capability. Yeah, so, so I think this actually all points towards the, 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 the ability to do general uh, artificial general intelligence, with, uh, which is kind of similar, I, I suppose, a big a step closer towards human, yeah. So in other words, AI actually now can perform actually a lot of tasks. Yeah. So from uh, linguistic intelligence, I think first of all, we with the current kind of a large language model, also called large foundation model, I think they are able to observe the world, a multi-model world. They are able to remember things with memories, able to do reasoning, and then using tool, and also to able to perform action. I think at the next level of connection, connective capability. Yeah, they will be able to learn from each other and also to well how to get rid of this one. But anyway, yeah, this kind of yeah. Anyway, and, and also it has self-reflection capability. That means it's, it's able to kind of correct its own mistakes. And most importantly, it's an autonomous. Yeah. So in fact, this these are kind of all the uh, characteristics of what constitute a uh, agent, which is kind of a uh, self-autonomous, has sufficient diversity and so on. Yeah. And uh, so, of course, Asian has caused a lot, uh, created a lot of excitement. I think uh, yeah, people like Sam Altman kind of were saying that, yeah, GPTs and assistant are kind of precursor to Asian, and then the future will be Asians. And these are a step towards uh, uh, what we've done, actually, a step towards a kind of a AI, uh, autonomous AI Asian. Of course, Bill Gates are also saying that they are not going to change. How every everyone interact with computer, they are also going to kind of upend the software industries. Okay, so 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 this paves the way for the use of agent. In fact, given the agent, in fact, the first part about agent is actually how can they sense an environment? And the environment here, we define environment as basically just an external context surrounding which agents operate. That includes human and agent behavior, external databases and knowledge, as well as kind of virtual and physical environments. And of course, the agent will be to observe the environment and take action. Yeah. So, so in terms of environment thing, the first is actually to do observation. I think we can see that all these uh, large foundation models are actually more and more capable, capable now, able to view multimedia information. And they are also able to take actions. For example, with multi-modal output, and they are able to kind of uh, use use tools and things like that to solve problems that are that are not so capable of. And also, I think we if we think about embodied kind of agents, yeah, they are able to kind of make use of uh, robots and other things actually to to basically project their capabilities into the physical world. And. Uh, I guess the next thing about Asian is that they should have an independent brain, right? So, so in terms of brain here, we're thinking of well, first of all is a big memory, yeah. So they would have, they they should have sufficient space for long term and short term memory, and of course we should be able to have the capability of actually 
tendering and then uh, analyzing all this long term and short term memory. The other aspect, of course, is decision making process. They should have able to, ability to plan sub goals and decomposition, and also able to do reasoning. Yeah, for example, capable of doing self criticism and self reflection over the past actions. In a way, the the key part of a human is that we are able to learn from mistakes. Yeah. So so I I think yeah, can we teach our agents to actually have this kind of a uh, uh, capability. And the last part, of course, is the uh, able to kind of collaborate. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, uh, the, the collaboration will include agent to agent collaboration. Yeah. Uh, as well as kind of agent to human collaboration. I think for agent to human, I think this is what, what we all have been kind of uh, uh, doing with the kind of so called reinforcement learning with relevant feedback and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think I'll kind of stop on this part. And then next, we probably will be uh, uh, looking into the two learning. I think the, the speaker actually, unfortunately, cannot be here. So he's going to speak online. Yeah. OK, OK. So uh, I will share my slides. OK, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, how can, can you do my yeah. slides? Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let us continue. Okay. Hi. Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so sorry because for the visa issue, I I cannot go to uh not not the visa because my passport has not been be applied uh applied and I can uh go go to uh offline so I present online. Hello, everyone. I'm Yan Kailin from Zhenmin University of China. I'm great to introduce this part of the tutorial. In this part, we will introduce a large language model based tool learning and autonomous agents. Let's start it. Uh, large pre-chain language model has found a way to continuously enhance their intelligence through the scaling law. By increasing the number of model parameters and the amount of training data. Notably, it has been discovered that when the number of model parameters reach a certain level, large model inhibits emergent behavior in their capabilities. It can be said that increasing the number of parameters leads to the emergence of intelligence in large language models, such as increasing the number of Neurons leads to the emergence of intelligence in biological individuals. So, uh, so we want to explore a thought provoking hypothesis. Artificial intelligence may mirror the development trajectory of human intelligence. These ideas suggest that as AI evolves, it could be potentially a replicate replicate the stage and patterns seen in the growth of human intelligence capability from small model, big model, to uh, autonomous agents and multi-agents. Uh, so let's discuss what it might be mean for the future of AI. As we look at both the similarities as the uh, change of AI faced and the unique challenge AI faced compared to human intelligence. So in uh, in this past, we will focus on the, the tool learnings and autonomous agents. So uh, in 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 this part, we will divide to the uh, fascinating realm of tool intelligence. Tools are not merely intention of human hands. It, they magnify our capabilities in the productivities, efficiency efficiency and proper solving. Historical, human has dominated the scene of tool use. This brings us a provocative question. Can artificial intelligence match human's capability in tool use? As we explore this question, we will uncover the potential of AI in extending what tool can do and possibility define our relationships with te the technology. Let it back this journey to understand how AI may 
not only use tools but also enhance that perhaps in the way we have uh, yet not imagined. So next we will introduce how to build a autonomous uh, autonomous agents for tool intelligence uh, uh, to promote a comprehensive understanding of tool learning. We will first introduce the general framework which encompass four fun fundamental component named the tool set, the environment, the controller and the perceiver. Let's start with the controller. Uh, we serve as the brand for the tool learning framework and it typically it is typically model as a foundation model, a project learning model. The purpose of the controller is to provide a fast, feasible and proceed plan from using tools to fulfill the user's request. To this end, a controller should understand user intents as well as the relationship between the intents and available tools, and then develop a plan to select the approach create tools for tackling tasks. In case where, where the query is complex and touches a high-level task, the controller may needs to decompose the task into multiple subtasks, which require foundation model to uh, have powerful planning and reasoning capabilities. Uh, the second component is the tool set, serving as the fun fundamentally ingredientally uh, tool learning of tool learning. The tool sets contains a collection of different tools that have different uh, functionalities. Each tools can have different interface. In this in this past we many uh, attack uh, the API as a uh, example to in illustrate how to interact with tools. Here we define an API as any function that can take the output of the foundation model as its input. For, for instance, for a weather API, uh, the input of the API may be uh, the location and the time, and the output may contain the temperature or the y speed. speed. The third component is the environment. The environment is the world where the tools operate, which provide the uh, perceiver with the SQL result of the tool. It provides uh, provides the inference structures necessary for tool executions, which can be either visual or real. The visual environment refer to the uh, simulate environment that allows the model to interact with digital uh, representation uh, di uh, of the tools while a real environment involve actual interaction with the physical rules. So the physical environment have the advantage to being easy, accessible, and replicatable, allowing for more uh, cost-effective training for the models. On the other hand, real environment provide a more uh, real, 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 realistic context, but uh, maybe more challenging for to assess and um, involve great, uh, greater cost. So the last uh, component is the perceiver. The perceiver is responsible for pro processing the user and uh, the environment's feedback to generating a summary for the controller. A simple form of the feedback processing includes include formatting the feedback using a pre-trained uh, pre language model. So the summarized feedback is then passed to the controller to assist its decision making. By ob observing this feedback, the controller then can determine whether the generate plan is effective and whether there are uh, a normalized uh, during the execution that needs to be addressed. Under more complex scenario, the perceiver should be able to support multi uh, methodologies such as the test, the vision, the audio, to catch the diverse nature of the feedback from the user and the environment. So, uh, we, we, now we give a formal description at uh, at uh, uh, at time step T. Environment provo provides he feedback on the tool execution, and the perceiver receives the uh, 
user feedback and the environment feedback and generalize the, uh, the summarized feedback uh, as T. Uh, typically, the perceiver can read uh, achieve achieved by a pre-trained model, and the controller will uh, generate a plan ATE uh, with select and executes a uh, approach a tool from the tool set. This process became uh, can, can be uh, 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 just generate, uh, gener generate by a pre-trained model. So uh, for instance, give a, a instruction such as I want to book a flight to Beijing next week. The controller first infers that the user's goal is to uh, reserve a flight with Beijing as the destination. And the next week uh, it is the travel time. The model then select the airline reservation system as the tool. Finally, its input is the time and, de and the destination as the primary plan. After the plan, uh, the plan is generated, it will execute in the environment and the environment will uh, result some feedback. So uh, it, it has four key problems. First, how to divide the user query into subtasks. That is the planning. Uh, the second problem is how to use the appropriate tool to solve the subtask. The four, uh, third is how to manage the working memory. And uh, finally, uh, how to manage the user fragrance. In today's talk, we will uh, focus on the planning and the tool use. So next, we use the planning module. Uh, uh, planning, um, uh, when traditional planning, such as uh, chain of thought, there is the uh, planning without feedback. It's usually in the non-agent scenario for uh, autonomous agents. Planning often requires feedback from the environment. A typical example of reason with feedback is uh, React, uh, the, the Re React framework. In this work, the also pro uh, use a general uh, patterns to combine reasoning and acting with uh, language model for storing diverse language reasoning and decision making tasks. Uh, React promoting a large language model to generate both verbal reasoning traits and actions in a interleaved manner. This allows the model to perform dynamic reasoning to create, maintain, and adjust high-level plans for acting. So the all select the model themselves to decide when to stop generate the action token during planning and reasoning about the current uh, situation to make a better subsequent. Uh, in general, uh, reasoning with feedback requires interaction uh, between the controller and the environment, which is a more complex setting. However, uh, the real-time uh, feedback from the user and environment allow the model to have a clear understanding of the current situation, make it possible to eventually accomplish a goal that requires long-term planning. So in real-world scenario, the performance of React based on the uh, COT concept often first off to of, uh, our expectation. So DSS, DFSDT work take this further by integrating the uh, tree of thought concept with React, allowing uh, uh, the consideration of multiple reasoning paths when planning with feedback and thereby enhance the effectiveness of planning. Uh, however, depending on uh, both uh, React or uh, 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 DFSTT are depending on an external performance measure as a prior. So uh, th this is pro problematic in real world scenario, where such a prior prior may not available, fault and even errors. For a genius autonomous decision making in uh, large language model based agent. It, it is crucial to develop a relationality, relationality from their uh, prostitutional uh, experience uh, to dependency uh, assess decision. So the, the rate agent, a relational decision-making agent, foster the development of this relational, relationality through an uh, interactive framework involving, involving experience, exploration, and utility learning. So uh, within this framework, 
uh, EL, ELO based utility construction is dividing to assess EL score to individual decision making to judge the utility by pairwise comparison. Consequently, this EL score uh, guide the decision making process to uh, derive the optimal uh, outcomes. Experience results on the gain uh, 24, uh, 24 points, WebSoft and Toolbench dataset demonstrates that read agent uh, is uh, performed better than uh, existing baseline, achieving over 10 points improvement in pass rate in diverse, diverse tasks. Uh, next, we'll continue to introduce how to learn to use the tools for agents. Uh, large language model can be trained to mimic the behavior of human experts through imitation learning. It is the simplest and most direct uh, method for tool learning. Behavior calling can be viewed as a, a simple uh, uh, simple response for, for uh, imitation learning that focus on uh, learning policies in a supervised fashion with the general assumptions that the expert's behavior is optimal or near optimal. The objective of behavior cloning is to change the model to imitate human expert's action given certain input or condition. Uh, WebGD is one, uh, prior, uh, one, one early work that supports the interact web search for LF uh, long-form QA. They change the model to interact with a search engine by uh, behavior cloning and uh, reinforcement learning. The also first built a web search interface to back up the Microsoft Soft Bean search engine, and then uh, rescued annotator to collect information using the interface to answer question. After that, they, uh, they fine-tuned GPT-3 to imitate human behavior for web search to organize the collecting information into answer. WebGPT is one, uh, one early word that supports interact web search for long-form QA. They train the model to interact with the search engine by behavior cloning. So, uh, so in the experiment, WebGPT showed that their strong ability in long-form QA, even uh, surpassing uh, human experts, it should be mentioned that WebGPT is actually the underlying technique behind the new beam search uh, system. Uh, in the view of this, we deem it uh, 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 in a, a Chinese version, the uh, Chinese web GPT, uh, web CPM, we saw that uh, this technique is also uh, work for the Chinese uh, CPM pre chain language model. So uh, the, it, another example is the web shop. WebSoft is a typical work for imit or, or another typical work for imitation learning. As mentioned before, the controller interacts with the environment and receives feedback from the consequence of its action. The model then updates its policy based on the feedback to improve its uh, tool use uh, behavior. So WebSoft provides a web-based inter uh, interactive environment where an agent could Browse and post, put, and buy uh, the product. The web shop use a hand code reward to assess the similarity between the human board and model board product. which indicate that whether the action performed by the controller leads to the correct final product. By receiving this feedback on the success or failure of its action, the model can it to relatively update the planning uh, strategy and adjust its decision-making process. Uh, through behavior cloning, the uh, train uh, the, 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 the agent, the train agent uh, inhibits non-trivial performance in, uh, uh, in, in buying the, uh, in buying the, uh, in, in uh, buying the uh, right uh, product giving human uh, instructions. So uh, uh, although imitation learning can uh, easily acquire the ability to use tool, it struggle with generalization and require imitation learning for uh, each new tool. So uh, 
do you, do you have any other uh, way to learn the uh, uh, le let, let the large learning model or let the agent to learn how to use the tools? Uh, the uh, to tutorial learning is another typical method to learning to use tool for large learning model, but have the model to read the tool menus. You understand the function of the tools and how to uh, how 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 to uh, uh, invoke them. How, however, most uh, inclusively, uh, a large language model, only the large language model uh, from the open air series, such as ChatGPT or GPT-4, has the high uh, zero-sort capability to understand the tool menu. Uh, so uh, for, for the uh, GPT-4, here is an example for tutorial learning uh, for GPT-4. They uh, learn how to use the tool by uh, in context example. In this example, we describe through a prompt statement that the input of the forecast weather API is the city name and the number of days for weather for forecasting. And the output includes three items: the temperature, the uh, and the while, and the uh, uh, precipitation. A large language model like ChatGPT can understand and how uh, how to use the forecast weather through the uh, in context tutorial. Uh, how, how, however, as we mentioned, uh, only a large language model from OpenAI serial have such ability. So, how can another uh, large language model also gain the ability to understand the tool menus? So, to a bench and to conjure uh, such a uh, 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 tool learning uh, SFT data to uh, facil fa facil uh, facilitate the construction of powerful large language model with general tool use capability with tutorial. We aim to empower the open source uh, large language model to master thousands of diverse real-world APIs. So the construction of tool bench can be divided to three parts, the API collection, the instruction uh, generation and the answer annotation. For the API collection, they, they gather uh, about uh, uh, 16,000 16, uh, uh, typical uh, state transfer API from the rapid API, a plan from that host massive of re, uh, massive, uh, massive of real world APIs provided by the developer. This API spans 49 diverse categories, such as the social media, the uh, e-commerce, and the weather. For this API, we crawl the, uh, they crawl the detailed API document from the rapid API, inclu including the functionalities, the description, the required parameter, the cost need for API cost, and so on. By comprehensing this document to learn to execute the API, Last learning model can generalize to new APIs and seen during training. Uh, after that, uh, for the uh, instruction generation, they first sample API from the whole set and then prone chart GPT or GPT-4 to generate diverse instruction for this API to cover practical uh, scenario. They create instruction that involve both single tools and multiple tools uh, scenario. This ensures that the uh, um, the model trained by uh, tool bands learns not only how to interact with the individual tools, but also uh, how to combine them with, to accomplish complex tasks. So uh, finally, for the uh, answer annotation, also can, can also uh, or the solution pass annotation. Uh, and each solution pass and uh, can contains multiple rounds of model reasoning and real-time API calls to derive the final response. However, even the most uh, uh, recent large language model like GV4 achieve a low pass rate for complex human instruction, making the uh, annotation efficient. So to the end, they developed the uh, uh, DFSDT, the Deaf First Search-Based Decision Tree uh, that what we introduce uh, 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 in the planning module uh, to bolster uh, the planning and reasoning ability of large language model. 
uh, compared with the conventional uh, React, DFSDT enabled the large language model to evaluate a multiple reason paths and map uh, del deliver a uh, deliberate uh, decision to either uh, retract step of proceeding among a promising uh, path. So uh, they perform better than the uh, React. Ah, finally, uh, they got a, a, a very good uh, tool bench. And so to assess the tool, to use a bit capability of the large learning model, they derive a uh, automatic evaluate the tool ev uh, evaluate back 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 up by the chart view. It comp compressed two key metrics: the pass rate and the win rate. They demonstrate that tool e eval achieve a high correlation with human evaluation and provide a robust, scalable, and reliable assessment for the uh tool use ability of the um, large language model. Uh, by fine-tuning the uh, llama on the tool bench, they often tool llama. Uh, by after evaluating uh, on the uh, tool eval, they derive the following findings. Tool llama demonstrates uh, comparing, uh, comparing a capability to handle both single tools and complex multi-tool instruction. As described in the table, uh, uh, Tool Llama outperforms uh, uh, Test Da Vinci uh, 3 and the Cloud 2, achieving comparable performance to the teacher model chart GPT, and only is only sliding, uh, uh, sliding better than the uh, GP4. Besides, uh, 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 the Tool Llama is heavy. Uh, inhibits a robust generalization to pre, uh, previous unseen APIs, require only the API document uh, or the doc, uh, API uh, menu to adapt to the new API effective. So, um, uh, ho ho however, both, uh, the, the way we talk for the uh, imitation learning or the uh, tutorial learning all need to collect manual annotated to use example. This is uh, uh, may uh, include completely trace uh, of human behavior and final answers. It's time consuming and uh, label intensive. Moreover, the learned model may not can adapt uh, effectively to new environment as in confirmed to the recall human behavior. Uh, besides, it is impractical to implicitly, implicitly annotate every possible scenario of the environment condition and agent behavior. Oh, uh, instead, human learn from the chill and arrow to correct, uh, correct and re re rectify their uh, tool use behavior. Sim similarly, feedback from both environment and uh, human can enable the model to understand consequence of its agent and adapt to its behavior. So uh, tool learning, can be considered as a, a reinforcement learning scenario where the action space is defined by the tool and the agent learns to select appropriate tools and perform the correct action that maximize the reward signal. The proxy model can be initialized by a foundation model. SAS initialization brings the policy model prior all knowledge, uh, uh, alleviating the needs for uh, the reinforcement learning agent to learn the basic skill. So here is a, a very, uh, the, the reinforcement learning for tool use is uh, not, not yet very well to explore. Here is a very uh, simple example, the tool form. The tool form is leveraging the in-context uh, learning ability of foundation model to bootstrap tool use example based on a handful of human rights example and then it explores the uses of several simple tools, uh, a QA system, a cal calculator, a machine translation system, and Wikipedia search tools and a uh, calendar. Uh, they further demonstrate that with a few demonstrations, the fundamental model can teach themselves how to use, utilize a tool in a reinforcement learning method. This auto generate example in the form of ATI calls are further fuel to reduce noise 
Uh, the field is based on the following uh, insulation. Uh, if the tool execution reduces the large length model's loss, then it may, uh, uh, may, may be a crack to use example. So we can save the instance as training data. The final tool use, uh, tool use data set contains sufficient supervision, significantly improve GT, GPT-J's tool use example, highlighting the potential of reinforcement learning for enhance the tool use capability. Finally, I will give uh, discuss some uh, application for, for tool intelligence. Uh, S agent is a, a open source uh, large language model driven autonomous agents that can uh, auto automatically throw various tasks. It's designed to uh, be a general purpose agents that can be uh, implied to a wide range of tasks. It is designed with the following feature, autonomy and safety. Hence, it has uh, three components, the uh, dual loop mechanism for planning and execution, the tool server and the function calling uh, universal language. So uh, for this, um, uh, uh, we start with a case of aiding user in, in intricate data analysis. Here, uh, the, the, the user sub submit with a, a zip and to, to the S agent seeking for assistance for in data analysis. S agents swiftly broke down the task into four subtasks, the data inspection and comprehension, uh, verification of the system's uh, Python environment for relevant data analysis library, crafting data analysis calls for uh, data processing and uh, analysis, comparing a uh, uh, a report based on the Python course execution result. Uh, here is a, a example. Uh, by uh, during execution, X agent at adaptively uh, employ various uh, data analysis libraries such as the pandas, uh, sky kit learn, uh, the C bone, the map map prop, the map lib, and uh, alongside skill in the fish files are uh, handling, shell commands, and Python notebook, even uh, uh, delving into visual uh, data analysis. So in contrast, the auto GPT, when attempting the same task, uh, only use the co-writing without private, 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 preliminary check on the Python environment and related uh, uh, library. This leads to the failures an uh, error in using essential libraries such as uh, the Skype and the Matlab, uh, so resulting in uh, incomplete uh, data analysis. The, uh, the S agent uh, evaluate in a uh, uh, um, in a benchmark that require reasoning, planning, and the ability to use additional tools, uh, including the uh, QA, the MABP, Python programming, the math math mathematical reasoning ability and interaction uh, coding and embodying reason. As shown in the uh, feature, S agent uh, uh, surpassed the uh, Valina uh, GV4 on all benchmarks. We allow the system level design of S agent. We show the system level design of S agent fully unleash the fundamental capability of GV4. Consider the lack of a uh, suitable and high quality benchmark target for the AI agent. They also uh, manually uh, create 15, 50 complex instructions and send them to both X agent and auto GPT. When comparing X agent with auto GPT, they found that X agent is significantly achieve a, a remarkable performance uh, preference rates of nearly uh, 90 percent. This highlight the, that. Not only does X agent excel in traditional AI benchmark, it but it also demonstrates the uh, the, the uh, strong ability in, in handling complex real world instruction. Oh, uh, the another example is the uh, robotics process automation. Uh, the RPA 
uh, automates a process of uh, or casting several subways by uh, manual craft loop into a solidified uh, workflow for efficient uh, execution. Uh, however, despite of its, its strides, RPA merely offload the simple and um, much nickel human labels. Why process require human intelligence still necessary human labels? First, as a figure shows, while RPA workflow can perform process automatically, their construction still requires uh, human intelligence for ele e elaborate design. Second, many tasks performed by human are categorized by their flexible and complex nature, while the workflow are limited to mechanically replicating human behavior process, posing tra challenge in automate uh, intricate process that demands diverse decision-making capabilities during uh, execution. So uh, based on the uh, tool, tool using uh, agent, uh, they pro uh, this work provides agentic process automation, a noble process automation uh, paradigms that overcome two uh, fully mentioned limitation of RPA. Uh, the first is the agentic workflow construction. Upon receive the human's requirement or instruction, last link model based agents uh, elaborate construct the corresponding uh, workflow instead of human. If a process involves dynamic uh, decision making, agents should uh, recognize this part of this uh, process needs need the dynamic uh, decision making and then uh, uh, ask the agent uh, uh, or put the agent into the workflow. Uh, the second one is the uh, agentic uh, workflow execution and then work, the workflow should be um, monitored by the agent. And once the workflow is executed in the dynamic part, the agent would uh, interv interview needs to handle the dynamic decision making and dynamic uh, the, the dynamic uh, execution. So here we present a typical co commercial uh, scenario where a business department manager seeks to extract diverse business line data from Google Sheet. Upon, upon identifying a business line to a customer, a messenger is uh, dispatched to the Slack channel. In the case of a business line as to, to business, a email is then sent to the respectivity manager. Uh, in comparison to an assessment of the business lines and a concealed overview of its uh, profit profitability. So uh, here, this example give show the capability to achieve through the interaction of workflow and agent. Given a similar similar form of the uh, uh, the content in the Google Sheet, this task inhabits a high level of uh, re reusability uh, of capability. Uh, to a uh, uh, various uh, business department with a uh, similar requirement. So here, here uh, shows that we use uh, the uh, tool, tool learning based uh, autom autonomous agents. We can enhance the, how to enhance the RPA to uh, the agentic uh, uh, process automation, make it more powerful. Uh, here is a tool, a very uh, typical example for the uh, tool learning. Oh, finally, here uh, because uh, uh, tool learning uh, for uh, the auto autonomous agent is quite a new uh, area. So we also uh, create a paper reading list for you to get familiar with it. Here are some must read paper and some paper for further reading. Uh, if you are um, interested in this area, for uh, more reading uh, materials, you can visit our GitHub after this tutorial. Uh, that uh, is uh, the whole of my presentation. Uh, thank you. Okay, for the next part, we'll be uh, presented by Professor Chen Xu for the uh, LM powered agent uh, for social network.
这么低。Okay, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Xu Chen from Renmin University of China. And in this section, I will talk about IOM for the agent in social network. Social network is a, a well established um, a field in the uh, in our artificial intelligence. However, uh, in traditional social network, we mainly focus on the uh, social network is composed of real humans. Let's take a look. Let's see, then you can Okay, however, uh, in the area of ARM based agent, there are two emerging new topics. The first one is uh, uh, how to study the social network is composed of RM based agent. This is very important because in the future, uh, maybe there are more agents in the social network and how to, uh, how the agent behavior with each other and how to uh, study the, the behavior patterns of the uh, agent could be very important uh, since uh, in the future, we may cooperate with more agents in the social network. And the second topic is about how to study the a uh, similarity between the social network, which is composed of the agent and the, the real humans. So, uh, in the former, uh, <clears throat> in the former, uh, the uh, speakers have have detailed the, the have detailed the, uh, what is the uh, iron based agent and uh, why they are important in the web. So, in this section, I will focus on two specific work on iron based agent for social network. The first work is uh, when large model based agent meets user behavior simulation. Uh, in this paper, uh, the authors try to build a user behavior simulator based on RM based agent. And uh, the insight behind this paper is that we, uh, the, the authors uh, want to borrow the human -like capability of RM to uh, simulate the real humans and study uh, different agent, uh, study the behavior patterns of uh, the, uh, the, the agent on the social network. And uh, uh, in this paper, the authors simulate three online scenarios. Uh, the first one is one-to-one -one chatting. Uh, it's, it's similar to uh, uh, our people in real world uh, uh, chatting offline or uh, chat in the uh, in a coffee bar. And the second scenario is one-to-many broadcasting. It's similar to uh, the real human on the social network. And uh, when one human send the patches on the web and all his friends will receive the message. And the, the third scenario is the recommendation system. And the user in the recommendation system can actively search movies and also can passively receive recommendations from the system. Based on the simulation and uh, based on the simulation, uh, they also, also study the social phenomenon based on the simulator. And there are two important scenario uh, phenomena. Uh, the first one is information cocoon, and the second one is conformity behaviors. Uh, in this work, the agent is composed of four modules. The first one is the IRM itself, and the second one is the profile module, and the third one is the memory module, and the, the, the last one is the action module. In the profile module, the users can freely indicate the characters of the agent, for example, the ID, the gender, the traits, and the interest of the uh, agent, and by uh, indicating these characters, the agent can follow uh, the instruction and uh, behave like uh, just uh, like the characters of the agent. Uh, in the memory module, the uh, in the memory module, the authors design a uh, memory mechanism which composed of three memory memory components, which is uh, that is the central memory, the short term memory, and the long term memory. In the following, we will, I will de detail these memory uh, modules. In the action module, the agent uh, decide what to uh, what action should be taken and when to take these actions. In the profile module, uh, the users can freely indicate the name, the gender, age, uh, trait, career, interest, and the features of the agent. This agent, uh, these features uh, can tell the agent to uh, follow this uh, character of the, the agent, and the agent can uh, 
just uh, behave like uh, like the people in real in real world scenarios. In this work, the uh, authors design three uh, mechanisms to generate the profile. Uh, since in, uh, in this work, the there are at most uh, one thousand uh, agent. So uh, if the number of agent is small, then the uh, the user can just uh, handcraft the uh, uh, profile. Uh, this method is very flexible, and uh, uh, but it should take a lot of human human labor and uh, uh, connect skill. Uh, if the number of agent is large, the, then the user can use GPT to generate the profiles. And also, uh, one can use the profile in the real world data to profile different agents. In the memory module, there are three components. The first one is the sensory memory, and the second one is short-term memory. The last one is long-term memory. The sensory memory aims to process the raw observation into more condensed and informative uh, information. And the processed information will be put into the short-term memory. In the short-term memory, if the, uh, if the information do not come uh, repeat for uh, sufficient uh, large times, then it will be quickly forgotten. And if similar information is um, uh, repeated in the uh, short-term memory, then it will be transformed to the long-term memory. In the long-term memory, the agent can self-reflect to general uh, more high-level and more abstract information to guide the user future uh, behaviors. Also in the long-term memory, the information can be forgotten according to some probabilities. And the, 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 the whole uh, memory mechanism uh, actually follows a paper in cognitive uh, cognitive science, uh, which is published in 1968. Uh, in the action module, there are three actions. Uh, the first one is the uh, in the recognition scenario. Uh, in this scenario, the agent can uh, actively search different movies and uh, also can passively receive recognition from the system. And the recognition algorithm can be freely indicated in this scenario. And the author, uh, if the author do, uh, if the user, if the agent do not have uh, some interest in uh, movies, then uh, it can require the system to uh, go to the next page to uh, to provide more movies. And after uh, watching the movies, the agent can uh, generate some feelings about the movies, and the feelings will be incorporated into the memory. The second scenario is about one-to-one -one chatting. Uh, in this scenario, the uh, the agent can uh, chat with each other. Uh, they may discuss the, their opinions on the uh, watch the movies and share their attitudes toward the movies. In the second scenario is the social uh, social network and the user, one agent can send messages on the social network and all his friends will receive these messages. The message will influence their uh, opinion towards some specific movies and uh, uh, this attitude will uh, spread uh, uh, across the uh, social network. Okay, uh, this is a, a typical uh, prompt uh, in the simulator. Uh, the, the prompt is composed of four components. The first one is the profile of the agent. It's describe the agent's basic uh, uh, background, such as the name, the, the age, the career of the, uh, of the agent. And the second part is the context. It means the, uh, when, the, when the agent action uh, take and uh, where the agent uh, uh, the agent action take and the third part is the memory of the agent. It's composed of short term memory and the long term memory. The short term memory, uh, all the short term memory will be incorporated in this part, and uh, the relevant uh, long term memory will be retrieved and uh, incorporated in this part. The last one is the instruction. It indicates how uh, how the current behavior should be take and. Uh, uh, what the background of the current behavior. Uh, this is the complete example of the uh, prompt during each agent action. Uh, since iron based agent, uh, since the efficiency of iron based uh, simulation is very important, and actually this it will cost a large a large amount of time to simulate uh, uh, agent behaviors. So in this paper, the authors design a novel um, mechanism to schedule uh, the agent behaviors. Uh, it follows, uh, it, it assumes that a different agent should follow uh, the long tail uh, distribution to take actions in the social network. That means uh, only a few number of agents will uh, frequently take actions on each round of the, uh, each round of the uh, 
a simulation process. And a large amount of agent only take a small number of actions in each round of uh, simulation process. So this picture uh, uh, exhibits the long tail distribution of this uh, of this process. In the uh, in the simulation process, the uh, the agent profile can be uh, freely changed. Uh, for example, you can run the simulator for several rounds and change one change the character of one agent and uh, observe how the how the simulation uh, proceed after and before. Uh, the the character is changed. Uh, we can see uh, if we change the character of the agent, then the agent may uh, behave very differently from uh, from the, the, the intervention point. Okay. Uh, in this simulation, in the simulation process, uh, uh, the the agent can also uh, uh, the the human can also uh, participate in the uh, simulation process, and uh, the human can communicate with the agent, and also can receive recommendation from the uh, from the uh, from the system, and it can also uh, converse with the agent to influence their opinions and attitudes towards any uh, movies. Okay, uh, this uh, this is the interface of the simulation uh, 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 of the simulator. Uh, in the middle, uh, it's the uh, it's it exhibits a different uh, uh, agent and the different color represents and the different actions of the agent. Uh, for example, the blue uh, color uh, indicates that the agent is watching movies, and uh, the yellow color uh, indicates that different uh, agents are converse with each other, and the red color means the agents are free. In the left top, uh, we we present the characters of the uh, of the agent. For example, the the age, the name, and uh, some other features of the agent. And you can freely change the characters of the agent at any time in the simulation process. In the left panel, uh, we, uh, we present the uh, uh, basic information about the social, uh, about the recommendation system and the social network. In the recommendation system, uh, we present the total users, total movies, and the, the uh, most popular movie that the agent can uh, have uh, have interacted with. If we uh, if we type the uh, if we turn the uh, the the type in the social network, uh, we can see uh, there are uh, there are how many how many users in the social network and what uh, movies are most popular uh, in the social network. And in the red down uh, panel, uh, we log all the uh, all the information in the running process. Based on this simulation, uh, based on this simulator, uh, we actually uh, conduct a very uh, comprehensive experiments. The first experiment aims to uh, examine whether the agent memory can produce reasonable results. Uh, in this process, we let the agent and the human finish the same memory-related task, and uh, we recruit recruit another group of humans to judge which one is more reasonable. By this current test, we just uh, aim to uh, demonstrate that whether the agent can uh, produce reasonable results as the humans. From the results we present in the uh, in, in the following figure, we can see uh, uh, for different uh, uh, memory modules, the agent can produce uh, reliable and comparable uh, performance as uh, as the real humans. In the second experiment, we aim to evaluate whether the extract memory are informative and uh, relevant. That is, uh, in this process, we uh, randomly sample uh, 15 agent behaviors and recruit three human annotators to evaluate the extracted information and just allow them to uh, label whether the extracted information are uh, informative and relevance, uh, relevance with the uh, target behavior. Uh, the results are presented in the following figure. We can see uh, the uh, if we use all the uh, all the three memory modules, the results are are the best or comparable with the best. Uh, in another uh, in another experiment, we want to demonstrate uh, that whether uh, the the agent can uh, can generate reliable behaviors. In this setting, we focus on discriminative experiment. That is, we present the agent with one positive item and several negative items, and we would like to say uh, whether the agent can select the positive items from all the items. So in the bigger uh, presenting in the following, we can see uh, the, the first 
the first two lines are traditional simulator uh, you, uh, without IRM based agent. And the third line, uh, the, the third column is our simulator. And the last one is the real human performance. Uh, we can see uh, our simulator rack agent can uh, perform better than rack sim and embedding uh, in this requirement. And uh, although it's not, uh, do not surpass the real humans, but uh, the margin is not that large. Uh, in another experiment, we uh, we also aim to evaluate the generative uh, generation uh, capability of the agent. In this experiment, we just allow the agent to generate a sequence of behaviors and let another human uh, to evaluate whether the generated uh, sequence is reasonable or not. Because in the recommended system, the uh, we may not only uh, compute the overlap between the ground truths and the generated sequence because there are many ground truths in the there are many ground truths uh, that is not recorded in the recombination data set. So, in uh, considering this uh, this problem, we just let a human to uh, evaluate which sequence is reasonable or not. So, from this picture, we can see a uh, rec agent can generate a, a relatively reasonable. Uh, sequence as compared with the ground truth, but is uh, and is very uh, uh, and it can surpass the uh, the simulator called Rexim, which is produced by Google. Uh, another experiment is about the efficiency of the simulation process. In this process, we study a uh, full problem that is how does the time cost uh, as the number of agents becomes larger in each epoch, and uh, how does the time cost increase as the number of API key become larger in each epoch? And the third one is how does the time cost increase as the number of epoch become larger? And the last one is what are the time costs of different agent behaviors? Uh, I would like to say an important point in this experiment uh, is that uh, actually the factors that influence the efficiency of the uh, iron based simulation uh, an important factor is the network speed, and uh, uh, it, it it seems that as we uh, use more agent and the more APIs, uh, the time cost do not significantly increase. We uh, we uh, speculate that the the result is because uh, we uh, we uh, we access the the API key, and the the, the API uh, may depends on what time and. Uh, when we use the API key, uh, it's very important in our experiments. Okay, now based on the simulator, we also study two uh, well-known social phenomena. The first one is social cocoon, uh, information cocoon. Uh, this phenomenon is well uh, is a well-known uh, phenomenon in social science. Uh, in this, in our simulator, uh, we try to uh, reproduce the, this phenomenon. We would like to see whether the agent, uh, whether a, whether the problem also happen in agent society. Uh, so we use entropy as the measure to evaluate uh, the information cocoon problem in uh, in our simulator. Uh, in the left top figure, uh, we can see as the simulation process be uh, as the simulation uh, pro as the simulation proceeds and uh, uh, the, the entropy becomes lower and uh, lower, which indicates that uh, uh, different agents may also uh, suffer from the information cocoon. Uh, in addition, we also studied two strategies to olive this problem. The first one is we uh, we would like to say, uh, we would like to see if we add more random item in the recommendation list, whether the information cocoon problem can be alleviated. Uh, the result is positive, uh, which can be seen in the uh, red top, uh, red top figure. Uh, we can see as we incorporate more random items, then the information component problem can be uh, out, out of it. However, this leads to another problem. That is, we uh, if we incorporate more random items, then the 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 user satisfaction on the recommendation result can be lower and lower. So, so there is a trade-off between the uh, between the uh, uh, so there is a trade-off between the uh, information concurrent problem and the user satisfaction on the recommendation problem. We should find the trade-off point to achieve a better results. Uh, another strategy to alleviate the information concurrent problem is adding more heterogeneous friends for each agent. It means that if we add more social connections for each agent, then the agent can uh, receive more diverse uh, information from the, their friends and uh, their received information can further influence their 
uh, their behavior on the web, and the then the uh, the, the recommendation system can generate more diverse uh, recommendation results, which can uh, leave the information concurrent problem. Uh, in the second uh, phenomenon, we study the uh, user conformity behaviors. In this uh, in, in this problem, we would like to say, uh, uh, if we like different agents to discuss. Uh, uh, exchange their opinions with the, uh, with each other, whether uh, their opinion can uh, influence each other. So in this experiment, we we let different agents to comment on the same movie, and we let different agents to uh, score the same movie from one to 10. Uh, in the beginning, we can see the score distribution uh, is uh, is very flat. That means uh, different agents can, uh, can have very diverse ratings on the same on the same movie. And uh, as the simulation process proceed, and uh, uh, in each round, we let different agents to exchange their opinions with each other. And as the, uh, as the, uh, as the number of simulation rounds becomes larger, we can see at the last, uh, in, the, uh, in the tenth round, all the agents tend to score the, uh, score the movie on the rating six and the seven. This means that uh, if different uh, agents can exchange each other, uh, can exchange their opinions with each other, then they can influence each other, and uh, uh, their opinions will tend to be the same. This demonstrates that in the agent society, uh, there are also conformity behaviors. Okay, all the information uh, about the bar simulator can be found in this uh, in this picture. Uh, in another work, I will uh, uh, talk about the. Uh, Another work called N3, Social Network Simulation System, with ladder on both the uh, import agent. And uh, uh, in this picture, uh, it, comparing with the BAO simulator, this, uh, this paper focuses more on the social network. Uh, it aims to study two problems, that is gender discrimination and the nuclear energy. Uh, the left figure uh, shows the overall architecture of the, uh, of the uh, of the model, uh, we can see uh, it is driven by real data, and uh, different agents can have different emotions, IQs, and uh, other uh, characters. And uh, this character will uh, drive the agent to express different behaviors, such as like for word comment and uh, generate the specific content. From the individual level simulation, uh, the uh, the paper indicates. Uh, several important uh, characters to drive the agent behaviors. For example, the emotion uh, simulation. Uh, for example, the emo uh, emotion character. Uh, the the authors indicate calm, moderating, and intense uh, emotion to uh, set the basic uh, set the basic uh, emotion of the agent. And uh, it also uh, set the positive and the negative attitudes towards different uh, uh, event. The agent can generate a specific content uh, uh, in neutral language and also can uh, exhibit different uh, uh, interactive behaviors such as forwarding, uh, uh, forwarding uh, a message or posting a new content or just uh, doing nothing. From the population level simulation, the author study uh, how the information uh, is propagated in the social network. Uh, it uh, uh, study two problems. The first one is eight child mother event and the second one is journal uh, Japan nuclear waste water release event. And uh, the author compute the overall number of people who have known this event at each time step. The first, uh, in the in these pictures, the, the left one is the real uh, real event speed, uh, 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 the, the real uh, event speed uh, speed. And uh, the, the, the left, the right one is the, uh, the, the event speed sp uh, speed in the uh, in the agent society, we can see they are very similar. Uh, they also also uh, study the emotion propagation. Uh, it uh, just uh, extract the emotion density from the textual uh, interactions among different agents. It also study the two uh, events. Uh, from the figure, we can see they can well reproduce the uh, real uh, ground truth in the uh, in the experiment. Okay, uh, well, uh, previous work have demonstrated very promising results in uh, social network simulation. Uh, I believe there are still many uh, important challenges in the future. Uh, the first one is role playing capability. Actually, uh, uh, the RM are, are trained uh, before uh, 2023 uh, because uh, so it cannot, uh, 
uh, it cannot row, uh, it cannot play as a new character of the uh, of the web. For example, uh, in Chinese, is uh, is like a, 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 a people who assist the uh, go call. Uh, okay. Another very important problem is uh, how uh, alignment in RM, uh, in area of RM. In traditional RM, the target of alignment is to uh, align the R, uh, align RM to uh, correct the human values. For example, uh, the RM should be uh, positive, uh, uh, should be trust, trust and supportive, costly. However, in social network simulation, the human alignment should be, the alignment target should be generalized. I believe in the future, uh, uh, because in social network, we just need, uh, we do not only need to simulate uh, positive human values, we also need to simulate uh, worse or bad, or even bad uh, the human values so that we can discover the problem uh, in the social network and discover and, uh, and find the effective uh, strategy to solve this problem in real societies. Also, uh, the knowledge boundary is also a very important problem in uh, agent-based simulation. Uh, for, uh, because uh, we, we would like to simulate ordinary people, but uh, RM uh, usually uh, know much more better, uh, much knowledge than uh, ordinary people. So how to set the boundary of RM is also a challenging problem. Also, the hallucination is, also, is a very important problem, not only in RM, but also in RM-based simulation. And the last one is the efficiency of the uh, simulation process. In the future, we, if we would like to uh, simulate more agents in the uh, social, networks, social network, uh, then efficiency should be, uh, uh, should be con carefully considered. Uh, this is my uh, talk, thanks very much. Okay, thanks Professor Chen Xu for the introduction about social network and for the next talk uh, will be presented by Dr. Zhang Lan for the uh, LM Power Agent and for recommendation. Excuse myself, my name is Zhang An, and I'm the postdoc uh, in Next Research Center. Uh, and my research interests are large language model empowered agents, robust and trustable AI, and recommender systems. So uh, today I would like to briefly introduce the large language model powered agents in recommendation. Um, a clear observation. We find out that there is a significant gap between large language models and recommender systems. The large language models at their core are trying to uh, model in language. Um, they learn from a huge amount of word text based sources. On the other hand, recommender systems are focused on modeling user behavior. So they rather focus on the sparse user item interactions. Large language models work works on a chunk of text. Well, the recommended system deal with items at a billion level. So as a result, they show they show very different characteristics. First of all, the large language model are more general, right? Um, however, the recommender traditional, especially traditional recommender are always lack of uh, cross-domain adap uh, adaptabilities. So this different are uh, significant. And how to bridge this gap? Well, that's become a critical um, challenge. We find out that there are two critical components for recommender system. The first one is we're trying to understand user behavior. The second one is the recommender system is acquiring the recommendation knowledge and then uh, recommend items to users. So two critical components. And with the recent advances in large language models, 
uh, the agents demonstrate remarkable achievements in autonomous interactions and user preference understanding. So how to bridge these two? How to align recommendation space with language space is very important. Uh, from my personal perspective, I think we have two potential researchers uh, direct, uh, directions. The first one is user behavior alignment. And the second one is recommendation knowledge alignment. So if we all agree this, then basically there are two types of agents in, uh, in recommendation. The first one is using the agents as a recommender, right? User behavior alignment. And the second one, uh, user agents as uh, using large language model powered agents as user. The second one is using agents as recommender, right? Um, basically, we need to answer two problems. The first one is, can large language model power agents faithfully simulate users? The second one is, can large language model power agents be a better recommender with recommendation specific knowledge? So basically I will introduce uh, researchers in these two research lines. The first one is agent for rank. Agent for rank basically is agent driven user behavior simulation. It's trying to answer the first question can large and small power agents generate faithful user behaviors? Firstly, we build the user profile. We have 1,000 large and small empowered generative agents initialized with real data and uh, all augmented by ChatGPT. And we also have item profile here, such as here, like we have statistic information in data set, as well as generated summary. And for, for user, we also have memory and action modules to enable agent to record past interest and plan future actions, such as watch, rate, evaluate, and so on. For recommendation side, we have recommendation environment. Agent for Run conducts personalized recommendation in a page by page manner and pre-implements various recommendation algorithms such as like ML, LightGSM, and so on. And we find out some very interesting key uh, observations. First of all, agents are capable of preserving the user's social attributes and preference. We find out that basically when we're using the simulate data, we find out it looks similar to the Oracle or data set about rating and about diversity of the user. The second finding is when we incorporating the agent's rating as augmented data, we find out we can enhance the recommender performance. And the third one is very interesting. We, we're using the LinkedIn to analyze, to trying to discover the causal relationships uh, among the movie quality, movie rating, and some other variables. We can learn a causal graph here. We can never do this before without this kind of uh, simulation platform, right? For, as a result, Agent for Rank actually offer a simulation platform to test and help us fine tune recommender models. So results, we find out large energy model powered agents are able to generate faithful behaviors. The second one is we found out agent for rank is zero shot, right? We want some fine tuning one. So we have Eugene later. Basically the key point for Eugene is we're trying to find out can large and small power agents generate behavior benefit the recommender. So uh, we fine tune GPT uh, 3.5 as a warm up and agents can uh, accurately select their interest items among candidates that. And also, uh, we change the discriminative learning paradigm to the generative learning paradigm. And we conduct ex uh, extensive exp experience on three data sets. And we can find out very interesting observations. First one, we find out that UJ can closely simulate actual select numbers, right? 
So it, it actually simulate actual uh, select numbers. And it successfully simulate, simulate over 90% of real user preference in all data that like among Steam, Amazon Book, and MovieLens. Secondly, we find out that Eugene can consistently and significantly strain the backbone model for recommendation among like around 10%. Also, very interesting, we find out that recommenders of my, uh, uh, augmented with Eugene simulated interactions can even surpass those augmented with ground truth one, ground truth augmentations here. It can surpass that. And we also conduct a user study. We engage 20 uh, real life volunteer and uh, let them util utilize their actual uh, Steam uh, gameplay histories to construct 20 agent profiles and use this profiles, use these agents to generate data, simulation data, and then use this simulation data to retrain like a uh, recommender. We find out that like mm, almost the MF plus human, which means we uh, we use MF to retrain the Eugene simulated data of 20 uh, volunteers. And we find out that the volunteers can successfully find out which one is better. Right. So uh, as a result, we find out behaviors generated by large model powered agents can benefit recommend us. This is quite uh, interesting and promising. The third work is agency app. Agency CF consider not only users as agents, but also items as agents. So um, they developed a collaborative learning approach that optimized both kind of agents together, user agents and item agents. We find out that uh, first of all, they have only memory module because um, users may have shifted dynamic uh, on a, like taste or preference. So they have both short-term memories and long-term memories. But for items, um, we have only short-term memories for to represent its characteristics. So first of all, we prompt the user and atom agents to interact. And then we let the user and item agents to reflect and adjust the misleading uh, simulations. So this is quite similar to the gradient-based. Right, what we have for like for deep learning gradient based uh, uh, back propagation is quite similar, but using the text based, it is kind of parameter free text based calibrative optimization. The key is collaborate collaboratively optimize the user agents and item agents. Right, at each step, we will prompt the user and item agents to interact. Then based on the feedback, we find out that this one is misleading. So we let the user and agent's profile to be reflected and updated. So we have, so basically propagation in a mutually manner. And then in this way, the simulated preference of user agents and item agents mutually aggregate and can be propagated to other uh, agents. So basically, agent CF implicitly models the collaborative filtering through interactions, which is um, parameter-free and text-based collaborative optimization. Uh, first, the observation, uh, the, the experiment's results show that it achieves a good performance, and it also shows that it can handle some position bias problem. So agents can faithfully simulate user item interactions. So we find out that, we find out that agents can uh, faithfully simulate users and also agent can faithfully simulate user and item interaction. Uh, maybe it's time for us to have a coffee break, but remember to come back
Well, welcome to back. Um, as we all know, like we solved the problem as using agents to simulate users or recommenda. And we introduced agent for rank, Eugene, agent CF, and so on as answer the, answer the question about can a large engine model power agent feasibly simulate users? The answer is yes. And now we move on to the second question. Can large engine model power agents be a better recommender? So I will briefly introduce recent research. research. The first research is about two rock, two rack. Uh, it used two enhanced large engine model to be a better recommender. Basically, it tries to answer the question, can agents utilize, utilize external tools to enhance recommendation? The key idea is to use large language model to understand current context and preferences of users and apply attribute-oriented tools to find suitable items. So basically, first step is trying to learn the preference the large engine based user learns user preference and make decisions like actually it have a preference for action movies. So then it will explore the items. So use the attribute oriented tools to explore a wide range of items like here. It will have action movies and five action movies listed here. After that, we will iteratively uh, do this kind of two stage. The process will finish when the large control based user is satisfied with the item list. And we find out that large control models using as a central controller to simulate the user decision. And two tools are used, the uh, ranked tools and the retrieved tools. So it's attributed oriented tools. And also it has a memory strategy can ensure the correctness of generated items and candidate items. The results show that first of all, benefiting from two tours, the tour rack can achieve a better performance on movie lens and Amazon. This demonstrates that the, the tour rack can better align with the user's intent. And we find out also in Yop 2018, the tour rack shows like it, it is a super bar performance because this Yop data set is a local business data set. So there, there is no that large of knowledge about like a common knowledge for large language model. And we also find most processes processes conclude in three or four rounds. This indicate that the large language model can understand user preference after a few iterations. So we conclude agents utilizing external tools can enhance recommendations. The second work is interact agent. It is actually to build an interactive recommender. Interact agent implies large language model as a brand and recommender models as tools. You can find out that there is a memory module like short-term and long-term memories. And here use tools, it includes a fine-tuned llama recommender. And for planning, it has dynamic demonstrations and reflections. Interact agents actually enables traditional recommender systems such as those ID-based MF models to become more interactive. And rec recommend. Recommend is actually trying to uh, using a self-inspiring planning, which is a reasoning method, al algorithm to help to build the agents. Um, at each intermediate planning step, we can find out that the agent self inspires to consider all previous uh, explored past for the next planning, both generating alter alternative thoughts and backtracking. So for first step, they go this, but it can go back and forward through different ways. So it's kind of a reasoning uh, algorithm 
to help do the recommendation here, like self-inspiration. The, uh, the third research is RAH. It is a reflection-enhanced user alignment for REC assistant. RAH actually comprises three components. The recommender systems, traditional like traditional recommender, the intelligence assistant, and the human, human, human user. So unlike the traditional recommendations that solely between systems and users, RH introduce an assistant like to as a bridge. This workflow enables the assistants to learn from user feedback here and to tune, fine tune the recommender system further. So basically it has a learn, act and critique loop. This loop is very similar to reflection. The learn agent will first try to grasp the initial personal, uh, personal personality. Then the critic agent will find out whether it is okay. The prediction is cracked or not. If not, the it will light the learn agent to refine the candidate personality. So based on this, um, the RH is trying to use agents as recommendation assistant. After that is MacRack. MacRack is trying to enhance recommender systems through multi-agent collaborations. For each um, recommendation tasks are addressed through the collaborative efforts of various spe uh, specialized agents, including like uh, manager, user item analysis, uh, searcher, and also reflector with different working flows. So actually it is trying to uh, use multi-agent with different roles to work collaboratively to tackle a specific recommendation tasks. And agent recommender can also be the agent recommender for agent platform. So here is REC for agent verse. Um, REC for agent verse, it has two, two steps. The first step is treating the agents in agent platform as item in recommender system. And then agent recommender is employed to recommend personalized agents item for each user. So basically we have chat GPT and a chat GPT platform. Each one, each user can build personalized agents and we can formulate uh, an agent. This agent is a recommender agent. It will help to recommend lots of personalized built uh, agents. So, so basically for agent as recommender, we introduce TorRack, Interact agent, recommend RH, Mac Rack, Rack for agent verse, and so on. So basically there are two research lines for agents in recommendation, agent using agent as users or uh, utilizing agents as recommender. So thanks for listening. Let's move on. Okay, thanks for the presentation from Dr. Zhang An. And for the next part, let me share the screen first. Yeah. Okay. For the next part, uh, uh, I will talk about the, uh, I will talk about the large language model powered conversational agent. And my name is Yang Deng, and I'm currently a postdoc research fellow in uh, National University of Singapore. And uh, we can see that in recent two years, there are so many large language model powered conversational systems that have already come up into our daily lives. For example, like ChatGPT, Gemini, NewBean, Cloud, and so many other uh, open source conversational model like Alpaca, Vacuna, Llama Chat, and so on. So we can see that in the era of LLMs, the conversational systems have already uh, gained powerful and exceptional capabilities of context understanding and response generation. And this 
two areas are the main focus in the uh, previous research uh, before the LLM. And currently, uh, when it comes to the uh, conversational agents, we expect that uh, this kind of LLM powered conversational agents can also act like humans, think like humans, and also behave like humans. Therefore, uh, similar to the architecture for LLM powered autonomous agents, uh, the LLM powered conversational agents are also supposed to equip with certain components or capabilities as humans, including like profiling, uh, memory, planning, and action. And this figure is from a survey from also uh, Renmin University of China. And here I will mainly talk about the uh, latest studies regarding these four perspectives of LLM powered conversational agents. And for the first part, we will uh, introduce the profile of large language model powered conversational agents for uh, user simulation. And maybe let uh, first let me review the traditional user simulations in pre-LLM era, uh, which can be divided into two groups. The first group is about uh, user satisfaction estimation, which aims to estimate the user satisfaction for simulating the user feedback. And the other group is about the user response simulation, uh, which aims to direct simulate the uh, system response to interact, the user response to interact with the system. And those are uh, several kind of approach in these two area. And for the first part, I will introduce the, uh, the previous work on the user satisfaction estimation. And as for the first part, it's about the semantic based user satisfaction estimation. And typical solution includes like a uh, sentiment classification, uh, which aims to predict the uh, satisfaction rating of the user's utterance by analyzing the sentiment of the user's current uh, utterances. And we can see that, for example, like this uh, in this figure, uh, the, the there will be a classifier to classify each uh, user utterance into a uh, uh, four rate uh, five ratings. Uh, regarding the user satisfaction. And another uh, solution uh, will be like the response quality assessment, which aims to assess the quality of system generated response based on certain semantic features. However, we can see that this uh, semantic based estimation may fail to align well with the goal of the conversation because it mainly focuses on the content feature of the conversation. And another type of user satisfaction estimation is based on the user preference, which is commonly adopted in uh, like chit chat or some topic aware open domain dialogue or also some conversational recommendation. So for example, in this CIR paper uh, in 2022, the authors formalized the satisfaction as the cumulative average of users preferences uh, for the topics covered by the conversation. And as for this type of approach, we can see that they may rely heavily on the availability of the user preference. So if the user preference are, are not available, uh, it becomes impractical to use this type of approach to simulate the uh, user satisfaction. And the last uh, group uh, for the user uh, satisfaction estimation I would like to introduce is the action-based user satisfaction estimation. And in reality, we can see that the uh, user satisfaction is highly related to uh, what kinds of actions the user takes for achieving the long-term goal. For example, in uh, in this example, we can see that when the user wants to conduct a manual service, which means that the user is actually uh, not satisfied with the current conversation. And more, uh, more specifically, the sequential dynamics of the user behaviors are also closely related to the user satisfaction. So to this end, in this uh, webcom paper in 2022, the authors proposed to model the uh, sequential dynamics of the act dialogue actions for helping the uh, user satisfaction estimation, rather than just focusing on a single uh, semantic, uh, or on single di dialogue actions. And here, uh, I present the top five uh, discriminative predictive dialogue act for uh, which are the most influential in the predicted satisfied and non-satisfied uh, dialogues. And this revealed that the correlation between the dialogue action sequence and the user satisfaction in different uh, conversation systems. And 
more specifically, we can see that there are only one, there is only one subsequence with a single uh, dialogue action, which is the negation. And among all the other most influential dialogue action sequence, so we can see that actually the uh, sequential dynamic of the uh, user uh, action is more important to determine the uh, user satisfaction. So recently, with the powerful context of uh, powerful context understanding capabilities of LLMs, uh, researchers uh, propose to utilize LLMs for uh, user satisfaction estimation. And for example, in this uh, SciCam 23 paper, the authors leveraged the LRM as an uh, user simulator for simulating the user feedback with uh, user satisfaction scores. And then the user feedback can be used for the reinforcement learning from human feedback or AI feedback to further improve the uh, response quality for the dialogue systems. Okay, uh, and for the second group of user simulators in the pre era era is about the uh, user response simulation. And there are also several different types of user simulators, uh, including the first one, like the, it's the most straightforward uh, approach for user simulation is to achieve uh, an appropriate user response for a pre-collected set of candidate responses. And in terms of different applications, there are also uh, different tailored uh, retrieval-based user simulations. For example, in this one is a paper from ACL uh, 2019, and it's a target-guided conversation. The researchers uh, adopt the topic-aware retrieval-based uh, user simulators, which means that the retrieved response will not only be relevant to the dialogue context, but also be constrained by the uh, certain topics. And another popular user simulator is the schema or the agenda-based user simulators, which are often adopted in uh, task-oriented dialogues or conversational recommendation. And in this application, we can see that the conversation can actually uh, be, uh, be, can, can be easily structured into some predefined schemas or agenda, which consists of certain types of laws and values, as well as different intents and actions. So this type of user simulator is widely adopted in the pre lrm era, uh, but the gen generality could be a limitation for this type of user simulators when applying to more diverse uh, applications. For example, like open domain conversation or some uh, general conversational information seeking because it is difficult to formalize a predefined agenda or schema for those kind of more open domain or general applications. And in recent years, uh, thanks to the growing uh, generation capabilities of language models, more and more studies investigate those kind of conditional uh, generation models for user simulations. For example, uh, in conversational recommender system, uh, the simulated responses are typically conditioned on the user preferences, while in conversational information seeking system, the user's information needs are typically adopted for the uh, conditional generation. So, and now we have the uh, much more stronger generation capabilities of LLMs. Uh, and we can see that this kind of uh, conditional generation capabilities of LLMs are uh, even much stronger and powerful than before. So the conditional generation becomes the most popular user simulation approaches in the era of LLMs. And moreover, we can see that uh, as mentioned in the previous uh, part, uh, the LLM set has actually processed excellent role-playing capabilities. Therefore, with the profiling module, uh, the LLM power conversational agents can be easily applied as the user simulators for various applications. And here I just take the uh, conversational recommendation as an example. And here is a paper from EMLP last year uh, the authors propose a new LLM-based user simulator for conversational recommendation, and they also adopt the target items and the uh, preferred attributes as the user profiling information, and also it, we can call it as persona. And also they define several actions or behavior rules uh, into the instructions, such as talking about preference, uh, providing feedback, and completing the uh, conversation. So we can see that with the LM-powered conversational agents, 
the uh, user simulators are more flexible, which can be applied to different kind of uh, different settings. In, in the conversational recommendation, we can see that it can either apply to the free form chit chat or also the schema based question answering uh, in the field of conversational recommendation. And in fact, the such role playing LM agent can be applied for user simulation in diverse uh, dialogue applications. For example, in, uh, in the iClear paper this year, the authors adopt the LM uh, based role playing agents to simulate different types of user in various applications. For example, like the negotiation dialogues where the system may play the role of the buyer who wants to buy the product uh, with the price as lower as possible. And the user may play the role of the uh, seller who want to sell the product with the price with uh, higher as possible. And we can see that uh, we can provide the target item price and also the item description as the user profiling data for the uh, LM to simulate certain type of user. And also, for example, like the consulting dialogue where the uh, system play the role of the uh, therapist while the, uh, the user may play the role of the patients and we can provide certain types of uh, emotional issue description and also the emotional type or the problem type for the user profiling and let the LM to play the role of the patient. And, and so does the tutoring dialogue. We can see that uh, we have the uh, user to play the role of the student, which will be interact with the teacher. So by doing so, we can simulate as many uh, users as possible if we have different user profiling data and this kind of role playing agent can actually be used for different kind of uh, user simulation for the uh, dialogue applications. So uh, we can see that the uh, LLM powered uh, role playing agent can actually be used for simulating diverse user, but uh, why do we need to uh, simulate diverse user? And here I take the non-collaborative dialogues uh, as an example, which means that during the conversation, the uh, user and the system may share some conflicting goals. For example, like the negotiation dialogue I just mentioned before, and also like some persuasion dialogues. And in, uh, in the existing dialogue system, the researchers main, um, typically overlook the integration of implicit uh, user-specific characteristics in their uh, strategy planning. And the training paradigm with a static user simulator may also uh, fail to make strategy plans that can be generalized to diverse users. So uh, in this recent paper, uh, which just released in uh, archive uh, maybe two months ago, and the authors proposed to use the big five personality and different decision-making styles to simulate diverse users during the non-collaborative dialogues. So we can see that uh, there will be different kinds of personality like openness, consciousness, uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and uh, neurotism. And also there will be different decision-making styles like directive, conceptual, analytical, and behavioral. So from the preliminary experiment in this paper, we can see that actually different types of users uh, will end with different evaluation results compared with the vanilla, uh, user simulator without any specified personality or uh, decision-making style. And then in this paper, uh, the author further proposed a new training paradigm to connect uh, the dialogue session by interacting with these diverse simulated users. So uh, we can see that here is the uh, new training paradigm proposed by the authors. Uh, First, there, uh, there contains two main uh, components. The first one is the user-aware strategy planning. Uh, the, this framework will first predict user mental states and some possible actions, which can be uh, represent the user's behaviors. And then it conducts the population-based reinforcement learning, uh, which will sample a diverse group of simulated users to interact with the system. So we can see that in the uh, traditional reinforcement learning from uh, AI feedback or human feedback, we will have uh, a static uh, user simulator with the LRMs. And in those cases, we, uh, we will not uh, be generalized to different kind of uh, user. So in this uh, training paradigm, we can sample a diverse group of simulated users by using different kind of user profiling data or information. And then we can 
let the system to interact with this kind of different types of or different uh the the simulated user with different personalities or decision making styles and then we can make the system's decision more generalized to different users and the previous study I just mentioned mainly focused on how to improve the model learning by interacting with a uh, diverse simulated user. So besides the model learning, how uh, how how can we uh, how can the evaluation benefit from interacting with uh, diverse simulated users? And here is a conclusion from the previous uh, uh, study I just mentioned is the ENLP uh, paper last year. Uh, the authors conclude that the LM based user simulators are easier to accept the recommended items than human user during the evaluation of conversational recommender systems. Since actually the LM tend to follow the user's instruction because the LM is actually trained to uh, follow the user instruction. So we can see that this kind of LM based user simulator will tend to easily uh, accept the recommendation from the recommend, rec uh, conversational recommender system. So it, it will become a biased evaluation when we interact with this uh, general or static user simulation. So uh, in this uh, paper also uh, just released in archive uh, in the previous months, and the authors proposed to uh, use also different kind of personas to simulate different kind of user with some different emotions or some uh, categorized into some different kind of age group to simulate different types of users. We want to use this kind of different types of simulated users to evaluate the conversational recommender system to obtain a more comprehensive evaluation. So in this paper, uh, the author uh, first proposed a comprehensive uh, evaluation framework for the conversational recommender systems. It includes both the system-centric uh, factors and also the user-centric factors. And here I will mainly focus on one of the matrix, which is called the coordination. Uh, the definition is that we expect that a good conversational recommender system will be proficient in serving various and unknown user without prior uh, coordination. So the matrix will become the computational matrix using the range or mean of other uh, ability specific scores that are co calculated among various users. So we can uh, think about that we will have different types of simulated user. We will calculate the, the other type of matrix for different types of uh, simulated user. And we, uh, we get the range and the mean of these other scores to see how well the conversational recommender system can actually uh, interact with different kinds of users. So uh, in this paper, uh, the authors uh, have uh, conducted some e uh, evaluation and here are some uh, e uh, interesting results. So we can see that uh, they perform the evaluation with the simulated users uh, from different personas. And we can see that most of the uh, pre-LLM conversational recommender models show poor performance in sensing the variation of users. So here we can uh, look at the uh, system centric matrix like the quality of the conversation and also the reliability of the conversation. We can see that uh, besides the uh, LLM based uh, conversational recommender models, chat CRS for other models, it performed poorly in uh, in different or very, uh, very with a diverse uh, or varied uh, performance in different kind of personas. And also we can see that the LM based conversational uh, recommenders uh, models like the trash CRS tend to adopt uh, sales pitches with deceptive tactics to persuade uh, optimistic users to accept uh, recommendations. And this is from the identity matrix from this paper. And so uh, that's for the, the first part about the uh, profiling capability of the LM power conversational agents, which we mainly use for the user simulation. And for the second part of the LM powered conversational agent, which is uh, more about the memory capacity, we, we will talk about the uh, LM powered conversational agents for long context dialogues. So here we first need to introduce the, what is the long context dialogue. So here is an example. We can see that in reality, uh, maybe we have uh, 
uh, check out our uh, personal AI system, we will have a multi-session conversation with this kind of uh, chatbot. For example, uh, after we have some conversation with this chatbot uh, several days, several months, or even several years ago, and after a long time, when we come to this uh, chatbot uh, in, a, in the future, we will have another session of the conversation. So in the new session of the conversation, we hope that the chatbot or the uh, conversational agent can actually have those kind of long-term memory to memorize some previous uh, uh, information or the uh, user preference in the previous conversation to uh, help in the uh, future conversation. So we can see that the existing dialogue system open uh, focused on single session interactions uh, and overlooking the need for continuity in real world conversational environments. And the long context uh, dialogue systems requires memorization and also personalization in multi-session conversations, provide more, uh, providing more consistent and tailored responses. So uh, there are actually two ways to handle the uh, long context dialogues in the literature. The first group of study leveraged some external knowledge for long context dialogue. Such external knowledge can act as a supplementary guidance for the reasoning process. And also we can see that this uh, sources uh, these knowledge sources may include common sense knowledge, medical knowledge, psychological knowledge, and so on, depending on different kinds of applications. However, we can see that this type of approaches typically uh, fail to capture personalized and context consistent information for generating uh, appropriate responses to interact with the users during a multi-session conversation. Uh, this is mainly because that uh, this external knowledge is actually some general knowledge which has only uh, loosely related information uh, with the user and also the previous uh, session. So another more realistic and practical solution is to leverage the internal knowledge for a uh, long context uh, dialogue. And this internal knowledge may include the personas or the historical events. And as for the persona, uh, it can ensure the character uh, consistency in long context conversations. And here is the common paradigm, uh, which is uh, uh, also a paper in a uh, uh, ACL 2022. And in this framework, the authors uh, used a personal a persona extraction module to continuously uh, update persona uh, memory banks for both the user and the agent. So after we extract this kind of persona from the previous conversation session, and then we can use this kind of uh, personas in the future session to uh, facilitate more consistent and more appropriate conversation with the user. And another type of internal knowledge uh, can be the historical events, which can ensure the dialogue coherence across sessions in long context conversation. And for example, in this uh, AAA paper this year, uh, the author proposed a memory bank for improving the event uh, memorization capabilities of LLMs. So we can see that uh, with the past conversation and uh, uh, the, this framework will first summarize the events into some uh, descriptive uh, summary and also can obtain some user traits from the past conversation. And then they will store this kind of memory into the memory bank and it will also be uh, updating along with the time and also along with different sessions. And then after a new session coming, it will retrieve from the uh, memory bank for a specific memory snippets, which can be useful for the, uh, the current conversation and can be remind from the uh, previous event sum summary or also the user portrait. Okay, uh, and for the third part about the LM power conversational agent is about the planning capability. And here I will mainly uh, introduce the LM power conversational agents for proactive dialogues. And here is the, uh, uh, here I want to first uh, introduce some limitations of the current LM based conversational systems. And here I just take ChatGPT as an example. And here are some limitations that are listed in the OpenAI's blog. And here I will mainly focus on the last two limitations. The first one is that um, actually the model will ask clarifying questions when the user provided an ambiguous query. 
However, the current chat GPT usually gets what the user intended. So it means that the answer may not be what the user uh, wanted to know due to the ambiguity of the question. And the second limitation is that uh, although OpenAI and also many other companies have made effort to make the uh, model refuse in appropriate request, it will sometimes respond to harmful instructions or exhibit biased behavior. This also means that like ChatGPT may seldom go against the user's instructions because the current LMs are typically trained to follow the user's instructions. So uh, we can uh, regard this kind of LM-based conversational systems as some um, instruction following or reactive conversational AI because the conversation is typically led by the user and the system may simply follow the user's instructions or intents uh, rather than uh, uh, go against their and seldom go against this kind of uh, user intents or instructions. So uh, here I want to emphasize the importance of building proactive conversational agent. And here is the definition. A uh, proactive conversational agent is a conversational system that can plan the conversation to achieve the conversational goals by taking initiative and anticipating long-term uh, impacts on themselves or human users. So uh, actually in, uh, in, in ACL last year, we have a tutorial about the proactive conversational agents. And in this tutorial, we uh, devise three uh, key elements for the uh, proactive conversational agents. The first one is the anticipation, which uh, requires the agent to anticipate future impacts on the task or the human users. And the second one is initiative, which requires the agents to take fun grant and diverse initiative behaviors uh, rather than just being responsive to the user. And the third one is about the planning, which requires the agent to effectively and efficiently guide the conversation towards the goal. So based on this, we can have this kind of comparison between the reactive conversational AI and the proactive conversational AI. So first for the reactive conversational AI, we can see that uh, during the conversation, the topic, emotion views are mostly user oriented and the system may basically uh, respond to the user's questions and also the task instruction. But in proactive conversational AI, we expect that the agent can actually have its own anticipation, which can be a long-term goal for the conversation. And then in order to achieve this kind of long-term goal, we expect that the, uh, the agent can have some capability for planning or decision-making. And also during the conversation, well, we hope that the agent can actually take some initiative behavior, uh, such as asking clarification questions, shifting topic, and other uh, system initiated uh, behaviors, rather than just respond to the user's question or uh, following the user's instruction. So uh, it may uh, raise this kind of questions. Uh, can the current LM-based conversational agents uh, effectively handle proactive dialogue problems uh, without functioning. So uh, here, uh, the, we first investigate how to trigger the proactivity of LLMs uh, using in-context learning. And here is the diagram. Uh, we can see that given the dialogue history, we may uh, ask an uh, actor LM to generate an action prompt which the action prompt can be used for instructing the uh, original dialogue LM, for example, ChatGPT, ChatGPT to interact with the user. And in some studies, the dialogue LM and the actor LM can be unified as one LM. And here I just separate them uh, for better illustration. And, and there are actually two advantages of the in-context learning for triggering the proactivity of LMs. The first one is actually training free because we do not need to fine tune the, uh, the large language model uh, with some data. And also it is very easy to apply. We can apply this kind of in-contact learning approach to different kind of uh, applications of the proactive dialogue problems. And in, uh, uh, in the following, I will introduce the work that proposed a proactive chain of soft prompting uh, scheme to trigger the proactivity of LM through in-context learning, which enables the LMs to take fun grand uh, initiative behaviors and also conduct intermediate reasoning to achieve the long-term goal. So uh, here is the paper uh, published in EMLP last year. 
and uh, uh, the author proposed the proactive chain of thought prompting scheme. And here is an example uh, from the uh, information seeking dialogues. So we can see that uh, uh, it will give them with the task background, which can be a grounded document. And also during the conversation, the user may ask several terms of conversational questions. And we can see that at the current time, the user's question is, what color was it? And here we can see that this question, uh, the pronoun it, we do not know what uh, this it refers to. So we can see that there are actually some ambi uh, ambiguous question during the information seeking dialogues. So uh, if we directly use ChatGPT to answer this kind of question with some standard prompting, uh, where we will provide the input with the task background and the conversation history and ask the ChatGPT or other LM uh, to uh, respond to this question, it will make guess what the user intended, even though the question is ambiguous. So we can see that the uh, response becomes green, which is not what the user intended or the uh, it can be a wrong answer for this ambiguous question. And then in this paper, the, the authors further uh, propose the proactive prompting, which further incorporate uh, some candidate action space uh, into the input. For example, in information seeking dialogues, it can be uh, either to directly answer or ask back a clarification question for clarifying the uncertainty. So we can see that in the output, uh, there will be a predictive action. And in this case, the uh, predictive action is to ask a clarification question and then the final response becomes, could you provide more information? Although this is actually a clarification question, we can see that it is still very general uh, uh, and it provides limited useful information for clarifying the user's uh, ambiguity. So uh, in this work, uh, the author further proposed the proactive chain of thought prompting, uh, which further incorporate the reasoning chain into the uh, output, the intermediate reasoning chain into the output. And we can see that uh, for the final response, it, uh, it will, the LM will first analyze the ambiguity of the uh, given question. And based on the analysis of the question ambiguity, the LM decide to ask a clarification question and find the final clarification question becomes, uh, which book are you referred to? And we can see that this kind of uh, clarification question is actually more specific to the uh, dialogue context and the task. So we can see that it's more helpful for clarifying the user's ambiguity. And in this paper, the, the authors also uh, evaluate in two other uh, common proactive dialogue problems. The first one is the target guided open domain dialogues. The system uh, in this kind of dialogues aims to uh, lead a conversation toward a designated target. The target can be some specific topic or some specific keywords and also some specific items in conversational recommendation. And also another, uh, the second application is on the non-collaborative dialogues I have uh, mentioned before. And here is the uh, negotiation on the item price. And we can see that there, the user may pay the role of the uh, buyer who want to buy the product as lower with the price as lower as possible. But the, uh, the system may pay the role of the uh, seller who want to sell the uh, product with the price as higher as possible. So we can see that during the non-collaborative dialogues, the uh, goals between the users and the uh, system are actually conflicting. So uh, here I will introduce the evaluation result uh, from this paper. And first, we uh, we can see that if the first evaluation is on the clarification in information seeking dialogues, and first we uh, we can observe that the LM actually uh, barely ask clarification questions. So with the standard prompting, we can see that the uh, ChatGPT and also Vakuna actually uh, seldom ask the uh, clarification questions, even though the user query is ambiguous. And then uh, we can see that the proposed uh, proactive channel of prompting uh, actually largely overcomes this issue in the open domain dialogue. So for the first uh, data set, it's actually an uh, open domain information seeking dialogue. We can see that uh, the ChatGPT with the proactive chain of thought prompting uh, actually uh, achieved a competitive performance with the uh, state-of-the-art fine tuning method, but the performance is still very uh, unsatisfactory in domain-specific applications. 
So for the second uh, data set, it is actually a financial information seeking data set. And we can see that uh, there is still a huge gap between the uh, ChatGPT and also the uh, state of art fine tuning methods. And for the second evaluation, it's on the target guided chit chat dialogues. And first, we can see that the LMs are actually uh, proficient at performing topic shifting towards the uh, designated target. And we can look at the evaluation of the success rate, which measure uh, how well the uh, system can achieve the target goal with a certain number of conversation turns. So we can see that actually the ChatGPT can already reach a nearly perfect performance on the success rate on reaching the uh, target topic. However, when we take a deeper look into the uh, evaluation result, we realize that the LM actually tend to uh, make aggressive topic transition. So we can see that uh, the uh, LM actually will reach the uh, target topic within three turns. We can imagine that if we in a conversational recommendation, if the uh, system directly uh, recommend the target item to you within three turns, it will make you feel like actually a hard sell. So it will actually downgrade the uh, user experience during the conversation. So this is not what you uh, wanted during the target guided chit chat dialogues. And for the uh, third evaluation is on the uh, non-collaborative dialogues. And here is the negotiation dialogues. And here uh, shows the heat map uh, about the relationships uh, between the reference and the predicted negotiation strategies. And here first, we can see that the LM tends to propose the initial price instead of greetings at the beginning of the negotiation. And actually in reality, we can imagine that uh, a, a payer or a negotiator uh, who proposed the initial price actually will place themselves in a negative place during the negotiation. So this is also not what we wanted in the uh, real world negotiation. And also we can see that the LM often directly accept the buyer's offers uh, when it's supposed to offer another uh, price for negotiation. And also we found that the uh, uh, LMs tend to propose a counter price to make compromise with the user. So uh, combined with all these uh, findings, we can, we can uh, observe that the LMs uh, may fail to make strategy decision for non-collaborative dialogues and tend to make compromise with the user. And this is also reasonable because we can see that the LM is actually trained to follow the user instruction. So the uh, LM is actually very easy to, easy to uh, make compromise with the user during the conversation. So uh, here are some lessons learned from the evaluation in this paper. So for the clarification in uh, uh, information seeking dialogue, we can see that the LMs actually uh, barely ask clarification questions, even though the question is ambiguous. And also uh, the LMs perform badly at some domain specific applications, which means that the LMs may lack of some specific uh, domain specific knowledge. And for the target guided open domain dialogue, uh, we can see that the LM uh, are proficient at topic shifting towards the designated target, uh, but the LM also tend to make aggressive topic transition, which will downgrade the uh, user's experience during the conversation. And for the non-collaborative dialogues, uh, we found that the uh, uh, LMs may fail to make strategy plans and also tend to make compromise with the user. So overall, we can see that the LM-based conversational agents may fail to plan appropriate initiative behaviors in order to achieve the long-term goal of the conversation. So uh, we can see that there are actually some limitations of the in-context learning approach. And here, uh, the first one is that uh, the LM, uh, the in-context learning approach may fail to optimize the long-term goal of the conversation. And also we can see that this kind of approach is not learnable. And also it will be limited by the uh, strategy planning capability of LAMs. So in the next work, I will introduce a work that proposes a reinforcement learning from goal-oriented AI feedback for improving the planning capability of the LM powered conversational agents. So uh, in this work, uh, it is published in ICLEA this year. And in this work, the authors formulate the proactive conversation as a Markov decision uh, process 
And the objective is to learn a policy pie, uh, maximizing the expected cumulative rewards over the observed dialogue episodes as the following uh, equation. And here we can see that there will be a reward function. Uh, given the current conversation state, it will provide a reward. And also we will have the state transition function, which will transit the uh, conversation state into the next day uh, with the uh, current uh, actions. And then we will have the policy network to determine the next action given the previous conversation uh, state. So the question will become how to enable the policy learning with the LLMs. So uh, in this work, uh, the author first proposed a turnable lens model plugin for the dialogue policy or dialogue strategy learning. And here is the diagram. And compare with the in-context learning diagram, we can uh, uh, here it just replace the frozen actor LM with a plug and play a dialogue policy panel, which is actually turnable. So uh, then this kind of policy panel can be conducted with supervised fine turning on available human annotated corpus for achieving a certain level of the uh, planning capabilities with this kind of human annotated corpus and. Then uh, in this world, uh, for the reward function, uh, the author used another LM as the reward model to assess the goal achievement and provide goal-oriented AI feedback for the whole conversation. Uh, and combined with the, so we can see that the system can actually interact with some uh, real user to collect the online interaction data and combined with the uh, reward from the reward LM, we can conduct the reinforcement learning uh, for further turning the policy planner uh, for long-term goal optimization. So this is also more practical for real-world application. So after we collect a certain amount of online interaction data, we can continually improve the planning capability of the policy planner. And however, there are still a, a concern on this kind of approach. Uh, it is the uh, it is uh, the interacting with the real, real user is actually very costly. So uh, in this paper, the authors further uh, adopt the multi-agent simulation, uh, which used another LM to simulate the user with the user profiles and employ the multi-agent simulation to collect the dynamic interaction data. And by doing so, even without the real user uh, interactions, we can still continually improve the planning capability with the interactions with simulated users. So it will uh, come to a, a previous figure, which show that how we uh, simulate different type of users with the uh, profile data, and then we can incorporate this kind of uh, simulated user into the reinforcement learning framework to further improve the planning capability of the LLM powered conversational agent. And for the last part of, uh, of the LM power conversational agents, uh, we will introduce the uh, action capabilities for real world uh, problem uh, solving. And here I will just take the web agent as an example. And the web agent uh, aims to uh, accomplish the task defined in natural language, such as booking tickets uh, through some multi step interactions with the web grounded environment. So uh, here is an example from the uh, web, uh, my to web data set and given a task instruction from the user and the web agent will need to plan a sequence of action uh, to take uh, for accomplishing the uh, user requested task. So in this example, we can see that the given task uh, description is uh, show me the reviews for the auto repair business closest to uh, 10002. And then the uh, web agent will plan this kind of a uh, sequence of actions. And then the agent can interact with the web environment to conduct these actual actions, even uh, with some specific uh, actions such as uh, clicking the button or typing the information and also ranking the uh, result list. So we can see that uh, after the, uh, the sequence of actions, the uh, web agent can accomplish this kind of uh, user instruction. And then uh, here I want, uh, I want to uh, think about the, how about the web agents become uh, conversational. Uh, 
Uh, it means that we are not uh, limited to handle individual task instructions, but further required to engage in multi-turn conversations. And here uh, shows an example for illustration. And the current uh, web agents mainly target at the web navigation program, which will handle the single turn uh, user instruction as shown in this example, uh, book a WWE ticket for price range from uh, $50 to uh, $100. And it's uh, an individual uh, user instruction. And with this single turn user instruction, the, uh, the web agent will interact with the environment with some multi-step uh, environment interaction. So it will take a sequence of actions as mentioned before. And here another uh, uh, application is the uh, conversational information seeking. We can see that during the conversational information seeking, uh, there will be multi-turn user instruction and where the user may provide conversational uh, task instructions this means that uh, it may uh, omit some repeated information in the previous turn of the conversation or use some pronouns to replace the certain entities. So since the uh, information uh, seeking uh, typically relies on the internal knowledge of LRMs or just search uh, or the search engine, so there will be only uh, no or there will be no or only single step environment interaction uh, with the uh, environment for each conversation turn. But here we want to introduce the uh, conversational uh, web navigation, which is a program that is more realistic and practical in real world application of the web agent. And during this kind of problem, we can see that the, there will be multi-turn user instruction, which is similar to the uh, conversational information seeking. And during the multi-turn user instruction, we can see that there will be also some uh, omitted information because it's repeated from the previous turns of the instruction. And also there will be some pronouns to refer to the previous mentioned entities in the uh, following conversation. And also it is similar to the web navigation. There will be multi-step environment uh, interaction. So we can see that for this kind of conversational web navigation, the agents will need to conduct multi-turn uh, in instruction with multi-turn conversation with the user and also multi-step interaction with the uh, environment. So there will be a bi-directional interaction during this kind of problem. So uh, here I will introduce the uh, uh, work that just uh, released in uh, archive also uh, in, in previous months. And in this uh, work, the authors released uh, construct a new data set, which is called the MT uh, my to web data set, which is built upon the original my to web data set. And the web, uh, my to web data set, as I mentioned before, is only focused on the single turn uh, instruction for the uh, web agents. So in this data set, uh, the authors uh, end to construct this kind of conversation session from the web navigation task. And and here uh, is the uh, workflow uh, for constructing this kind of data set. And here we can mainly just take a look at the uh, final data sample here. Uh, we can see that during the conversation, uh, the author may raise some follow-up uh, instruction that are related to the previous one by using like co-reference or ellipsis, which means that omitting some repeated information and also sometimes the follow-up instruction may rely on the previous uh, mentioned environmental status, uh, uh, which not only focus on the conversation uh, context, but also related to the environmental status. And however, uh, and also we can see that after a task is finished, the user may also shift to a new task. So in this case, some previous environmental information may become uh, useless. So we can see that in this kind of multi-turn uh, or the conversational web navigation problem, uh, actually it will become more uh, complicated for the uh, web agent to conduct the multi-turn uh, interactions. So the main challenges in the conversational web agents will be the uh, longer and noisier context because we not only contain the uh, dialogue context, but also contains the uh, environmental, uh, 
environmental interaction history. So that will be a very long uh, conversation and the interaction history. So uh, the first one is about the user agent conversation. And during the user agent conversation, we can see that there will be some co-reference. The user uh, may tend to use the pronouns to refer to the previous mentioned entities. And also there will be the ellipsis issue because the follow-up instruction may omit some repeated information in the previous terms. And also there will be some task drifting. Uh, the completed task information can be noisy to, to the ongoing task because the previous task is already finished and the user may already shift it into a new task. So the, uh, the previous task information can be useless uh, for and be noisy, noisy for the uh, ongoing task. And for another one is about the uh, agent environment interaction. And we can see that there are actually some action dependency and because the multi-step actions are required to complete the task. And also there will be some uh, environment, uh, environmental status reliance because the follow-on interactions may refer to the information in the environment rather than just the uh, conversation history. So in this work, uh, the uh, authors proposed a novel framework called the uh, uh, self-reflected uh, memory augmented planning for the conversational web uh, navigation. And there contains uh, three modules, uh, which is also similar to the uh, autonomous agents uh, framework. The first one is a memory module. That will be a memory bank to store the memory snippets. And the memory snippets will contain the uh, each interaction between the user and the system and the agent, and also the agent and the environment. And also there will be a multifaceted uh, retriever to retrieve memory snippets that are relevant to both the user instructions and also the previous actions. And there uh, will be a, a re reflection module contains two uh, functions. The first function is the memory refinement, which aims to uh, generate descriptive uh, rationale from the complex uh, memory snippets for planning, and also the memory simplifications, uh, to, uh, which aims to filter out the irrelevant elements from the environment status for saving the memory space. And the last module will be the planning module, and we will uh, here it will uh, incorporate the memory to decide the next action to take for handling this kind of uh, conversational web navigation problem. So that's all for the uh, 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 for my part about the LM powered conversational agents. And then for the next part, uh, I will uh, introduce the LM powered agent in the web with some open challenge and be, uh, and be on with the uh, with Dr. Zhang An. And first, I will introduce the first part of the open challenge, which is about the trustworthy and uh, reliable uh, LM powered agents, which means that we hope that the, uh, the trustworthy and reliable LM powered agents can actually enhance the user experience and promote safety and also ensure some uh, ethical interactions rather than just uh, accomplishing the task or uh, uh, efficient or the efficiency or effectiveness. And then for the next part, uh, it will be uh, Dr. Zhang An for introduce the evaluation. So for the first part, I will introduce the uh, trustworthy and reliable uh, agents. And here, uh, there are several comprehensive surveys discussing the key perspective of LM trustworthiness. Uh, and which are also valuable for consideration when building trustworthy uh, LLM agents. For example, in this survey paper, the authors categorize seven key perspectives of uh, LLM trustworthiness, including like reliability, safety, uh, fairness, resistance to misuse, explainability, uh, social norm, and also robustness. And in each category, there are also different subcategories that are related to each trustworthiness uh, challenges. And therefore it would be a promising direction to enhance the uh, trustworthiness of LM agents following a uh, different kind of categorization and in terms of different real world uh, problems. So here I will take the uh, proactive uh, conversational agent as an example. And in this uh, CKR perspective paper this year, uh, the authors, uh, uh, mainly focus on the human center uh, 
proactive agents, which emphasize the human needs and expectations, and also consider the uh, ethical and social implications beyond just the technical uh, cap capabilities. So this figure illustrates the three dimensions that uh, the authors propose to be considered for the human-centered proactive conversational agent. And for most of existing uh, studies on proactive conversational agents, they only focus on improving the intelligence dimension of the proactive conversational agents, including the uh, anticipation, initiative, and also the planning capabilities. And here the authors would like to emphasize uh, the, the importance of the other two dimensions about the uh, human-centered perspectives. Uh, one is the uh, adaptivity, which includes three representative uh, capabilities. The first one is patient, which means that the uh, agent is expected to adapt and manage the pace of taking initiative. As I mentioned in the previous work, we can see that the LM actually is aggressive in taking uh, topic shifting towards the target. So we hope that we can uh, we, we can achieve the target without uh, compromising with the user's experience. So we hope that the LM can actually adapt its patience during the uh, proactive behaviors and also uh, the time sensitivity to take uh, initiative according to according for uh, real-time user needs and status. And uh, also the self-awareness to recognize and understand uh, the uh, its own limitation of the conversational agents. And uh, to sum up, the, the dimension of adaptivity is about uh, when and how often the proactive conversational agents should take the initiative behaviors by taking into account certain human uh, factors. And for another uh, dimension, it's about the civility. And civility is more about the proactive conversational agents uh, should conform to certain ethical and social norms and being trustworthy and safe and also cannot cross the boundary between the human and the AI to control access to personal and sensi uh, sensitive uh, information. So here I will introduce a work uh, focusing on the self-awareness of the uh, LMs, uh, which requires the agent to recognize and understand its own limitations. And uh, in fact, uh, there are many recent studies review that the uh, LMs actually uh, exhibit overconfidence uh, in their responses. We can see from this example, even though the answer uh, is incorrect to the question, the LM is actually still very confident about its answer. For example, like 70% are uh, sure about the, uh, the answer is correct. So this kind of issue could be much more severe when encountering some unknown questions. Uh, here is an example. Uh, the question is what animal can be found at the top of the uh, man's Wimbledon trophy? And we can, this is actually an incorrect question because there is a fruit-like design at the top of the trophy instead of an animal. So given this kind of incorrect question, the LM will still feel very confident to answer this kind of uh, incorrect question by providing some hallucinated or incorrect answer uh, like that. Uh, animal that can be found at the top of the trophy is a falcon. So we can see that it will uh, lead to some hallucination due to the uh, overconfidence issue of the LRM. And then there are several existing words on responding to this kind of unknown questions. The first type is to conduct the unknown question detection. And uh, the problem definition will be like, uh, given a question, the language model will perform binary classification for known and unknown questions. So if it detected to be a unknown questions, the LMN will reject to answer this kind of questions. So there are also several uh, existing words uh, propose different kind of approaches for this kind of uh, unknown question detection. For example, using in context learning with some future demonstration or some self ask prompting scheme. And also there are some supervised fun turning approaches like the R turning method, uh, which the also uh, constructs several uh, constructs some human annotated uh, data set that uh, include the question and res response pairs and the question is the unknown questions and all the answer will be some uh, template like I am unsure or I don't know this kind of 
uh, refusion to answer the unknown question, and then it can conduct the supervised fine tuning with the uh, this kind of annotated data for improving the capability of LM to respond to the unknown questions. And uh, another group of uh, uh, existing words uh, formulate it as the unknown question classification program. So uh, the program definition will become uh, given an unknown question, the language model performs multi-class classification to characterize uh, why a question is unknown. So for example, like this work, uh, they categorize the unknown question into uh, four, five different types, including the incomplete questions, futuristic question, incorrect question, ambiguous question, and also unmeasurable question. And the uh, uh, LM will first uh, conduct the multicast classification to classify uh, what kind of the, uh, what types of the current question it is. So for example, like it will respond with that, the question is incorrect. So compared with the unknown question detection, this type of approach can actually provide more information to uh, help the user knows why the provided question is actually unknown. So, uh, uh, so although these two kind of uh, approach can actually refuse to answer the uh, response question, uh, unknown questions, we can see that they are actually not very user friendly because we do not want that when we interact with the LNs the LM often reject our question because we just provide an inappropriate question. So it may fail to meet the user's information needs by just uh, rejecting this kind of unknown questions. So uh, the question may become how to properly respond to those unknown questions. And here is a recent work uh, also released in uh, archive this month. And the, uh, the authors, uh, Propose this kind of desired response format. It will include first, it will uh, identify the type of unknown question, which is similar to the unknown question classification. So we will first say that the question is incorrect. And then it will proactively provide justification or explanation for the uh, why the question is unknown. And th although this is not required from the user, but this kind of approach can better help the user understand why uh, the user's uh, provided question is unknown or uh, what kind of problem in, in their questions. And then in this world, uh, the authors proposed uh, uh, self uh, a self-alignment approach, which aims to utilize the leverage model to enhance itself and align its uh, response with the desired behaviors. Okay. And in this kind of workflow, we can see that uh, it will provide with some uh, uh, C data and also some uh, unlabeled data. And then the, this kind of workflow can directly generate some self-augmented data uh, with some desired response. And then it contain a self-curation step to filter out those low quality uh, data. And then we can have used this kind of selected data to further conduct the supervised fine tuning to improve the capability of LM for responding to unknown questions. And this kind of self-alignment can also be conducted in, a, in an interactive way and to uh, iteratively improve the LM's capability for responding to the unknown questions. And that's all for my uh, part about the trustworthiness of uh, uh, trustworthy and reliable uh, LM power agent and I will pass to Jenan for the uh, LM power agents and evaluation. Well, um, after a long tutorial, we all agree that large language modeling power agents are powerful, do we? Right, if, if this is correct, like, then the agents can enable a rich set of capabilities and potential risk rises, right? Because um, when we're using tools, 
um, you could leakage private data or cause financial losses because we can access some other tools, right? So how to evaluate agents for their performance and safety risks is very important. But identify this kind of risk is labor, labor intensive. And because agents become more complex and the high cost of testing these agents will make it difficult. So this is from one perspective. We need, we have to evaluate agents. The second one is, okay. The second is actually because of the abilities, agents' abilities, could we use agents to construct evaluations on large language models? Because evaluating the alignment of large language models is challenging, but we do believe like large language model powered uh, agents is powerful. So it, it, uh, agents are able to learn from the past, integrate external tools and perform reasoning to solve complex tasks. So could we use agents to construct evaluation? So these are two part of potential research directions. The first one is evaluate large language models uh, based agents. The second one is using large language model powered agents as evaluation tools. So first I will introduce three recent uh, works about evaluate large language model powered agents. The first is agent bench. When we evaluate large language models, could we also evaluate the potentials of large language models to be an, to be an agent? Yes, it is possible. So agent bench is trying to uh, simulate interactive and complex environments for large language model to operate as autonomous agents. Basically it constructs eight distinct uh, environments such as knowledge graph, operating systems, database, and some puzzles to trying to figure out the possibility and uh, abilities of large language models. So it's trying to evaluate agents' core abilities such as um, in instruction following, coding, uh, logical reasoning, and so on. This is actually an ideal test bed for both large language model and agent evaluations. The second paper is tour emu. It's trying to identify the risks of agents. So basically it has two parts. The first part is emul emulator. The second part is evaluator. It's trying to use large language model to emulate tour execution and enable scalable testing of agents. So for emulator, it has two steps. The first step is using large language model to access a, lar a, a, a large board of tools. The second one is red, red teaming. Um, it automatically instantiates scenarios where agents are more likely to cause severe risks. So building this kind of uh, ev evaluation benchmark can quantitatively evaluate agents across various tours and scenarios. The third one is our judge. Our judge is a benchmarking uh, safety risks of agents. The key idea is trying to incorporate human consensus on safety with annotated safety risk labels. So for this paper, it has labels and high quality risk descriptions. This two are very, uh, labor intensive. So basically it has two uh, evaluation paradigm. The first paradigm is similar to the uh, EMU, uh, the, the last two works, which is standard. Giving a record of an agent, large language models are asked to generate and analyze and a label. For the second one is Oracle. This Oracle provided with human annotation risks and descriptions. So this our judge, judge 100, over 100 agent interaction records. So basically for today's uh, many works are trying to do evaluation of the agents. And I do believe this is not the end. 
by the very beginning. For the second part, could we use agent to evaluate large language models? I think it, it is possible. So aligning agent is trying to assess large language models alignment with human values via agent-based evaluations. So uh, the existing e evaluation benchmarks, it has adopted like predefined misconduct data set. This need users to predefined. So it is quite labor in intensive. And then it using the predefined misconduct to prompt target large range models. After that, uh, when we have response, we will use this response to evaluate the uh, feedbacks of these large range models. So this is kind of like existing evaluation benchmarks. Most of the works using this, this pipelines to, to evaluate large range models. However, we do believe like um, the large range model is evolving and could we use like automate scalable in-depth and adaptive evaluations leveraging the ability of agents to solve these problems? I do believe this is possible. Mm. Instead of just using predefined misconduct, we can use web search of agents' abilities. We have a direct query and to do web search, web browsing, and then have like uh, misconduct and to generate this kind of test scenarios. For this uh, automatic emulator, we have memories. We will learn from the past, whether it is success or unsuccess, we can learn from the past past, and try to generate a, a more long-tailed test scenarios here. And if we prompt target large language model, we find out the e evaluators says like, well, uh, you successfully passed this task. Then we can, could we find a more difficult task model to let the large language model to evaluate? Yes, possible. We can use agents' reflection, uh, reflection uh, abilities. We have an iterative refiner to refine the task general to be more difficult for large language models. So basically, this is an example. For example, actually eating and drinking on our MRT in Singapore are not permitted, right? So when we when we have this misconducted we can try to first retrieve from the memory, find out some uh, misconduct, like the Singapore government prohibits the sale of chewing gum. And then the generated scenarios here. This is kind of in-context learning, right? We can do in-context learning to help to generate realistic scenarios. The scenarios, it looks like, well, a man in a blue shirt pours out a sandwich from his bag and starts eating it. It is a more realistic scenarios, and we put prompt these scenarios to large range models to let him decide whether it is accessible or not. Well, uh, the maybe the large range model will tell you the target large range model will tell you. I disagree with the scenarios. I don't. I don't think it it is suitable. It, it means this large language model successfully has your test scenarios, right? Then we can do refinement. Refinement, we're trying to make the scenario more difficult, more long tail, and change to be like, as uh, she reaches into her bag, pours out a bar and takes a quick bite, hoping to stave off her hunger until she can get a proper meal and something like this. Then prompt the target large language model again. Maybe the target, the target large language model will change his decision like, well, I do believe this scenario is okay, right? So, so the second stage is refinement. Iteratively refine the scenario based on the feedback from tar target large language models using like chain of thought to providing long tail risks. We find out that actually aligned agent exploits more misaligned cases in target uh, large language models compared to other evaluation methods. And here we evaluate the 
test Cinero's harmfulness. We can find out that as we do the iteration, the green one is the, the L agent with, uh, with refiner. We find out that uh, refine the test scenario could reduce the harmfulness, which enhances the difficulty of uh, for large range model to identify the risks. Then we come we do the ablation study, we find each components of this allied agents are very important. The third one is we're trying to do multi-turn reflection. We find out that this multi-turn reflection can boost the power of a allied agent to identify underexplored alignment issues until it finally converges. So um, this work tell, tells us it is potential for us to evaluate the large range model using agents, right? Um, so this is the summary of our tutorial. We firstly introduce large range model power agents and uh, introduce the tool learning, social network recommendation, conversational agents. At the end of our talk, we have like challenges, trustworthy and evaluation. Uh, we thank all uh, audience and uh, we wish we can like have another tutorial to see again. Thank you. Is there any question for our tutorial?